G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and I'm in Bothwell, Tasmania on a 15,000 hectare family property that's run by Will, the owner and manager, and they are doing an amazing amount of work in farm automation and technology. And they're also doing amazing things with generating their own electricity. Will, I can't wait to show everyone. I reckon you're leading the pack. Can we have a look around? Of course. So Will, this whole story of automation started with you building a Wi-Fi tower on the property because you wanted NBN. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, we, uh, we had a fella called Jason Short come to the area. Uh, he was uh, wanting to um, basically do a presentation on how telemetry Wi-Fi networks could benefit farmers. Yep. And uh, we were really excited about that because um, a, a slow internet connection was making it incredibly difficult for research, for paying the bills, for doing the bass, and uh, all kinds of different things, you know, that, to do with a bit running with a business. And it's becoming more and more, everyone's got to be online, even, you know, to do your NDVIs and all that yeah, sort exactly. of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Electronic yeah, yeah. NVDs and, yeah, all sorts. So there's an interesting story, even, and I love this fact you might be right out in the front of technology but you're still Australian tell us about this building that you built your tower in uh, so we thought it'd be a great idea to recycle the original homestead toilet that was built in 1823 yeah it used to be a three-seater um, outdoor toilet with a hue and pine seat and a trough that was emptied once a week and uh, okay now it's sitting on top of a hill um, protecting batteries in a solar station for a uh, a farm uh, network. So you've built your whole farm network around an old toilet. Yep. <laughs> Can we have a look? Of course. So I'll take you inside the uh, the loo with a view. So this is uh, basically a battery bank powering all of the uh, Wi-Fi antennas, and um, we have a LoRaWAN. Um, Gateway up there as well. Yeah, tell us about Laura Wan. Laura Wan, um, I'm not a huge expert on, but it's uh, it's a low-powered uh, radio frequency and uh, protocol that allows for uh, small amounts of data to be transmitted over a long period, um, a long distance, using a little power. Uh, so it means that nodes are very low cost. They don't require hardly any solar panels if you without a solar panel on a basic instrument it'll be you know some nodes can last up to eight years without um having their batteries going flat it's uh currently um being trialed by us for use with soil moisture probes we'll be setting sensors up on gates potentially to open and close gates um we've got them on our center pivots as um radio transmitters for um um, pressure sensors so we've got pressure sensors on the end of the pivots some of the machines require boost pumps when they're facing up hills so the the nodes are sending pressures um, back through the gateway which travels through our network and uh, and to the uh, VSD drives which are um, controlling the pumps the electric pumps so what sort of things are you using this Wi-Fi network for at the moment will uh, so we're using it to control our irrigators where we are um, controlling all of our Valley pivots via the Base Station 3 software made by Valley. Um, so I'm able to monitor and control all of our centre pivots. And um, how many of those do you have? Currently we have 17. And that that's over how many how many hectares at the moment? A thousand hectares. A thousand yeah. hectares, right. Yeah. Um, I'm also using uh, our network to control uh, pumps. Um, uh, valves on our um, on our reservoirs and uh, and uh, water controlling control gates. We've got cameras set up throughout the farm for both security, um, being able to turn them on and check whether the, the wheels have fallen off our irrigators or yeah. whether there's issues um, on different parts of the farm because our, our farm covers a large area and can take quite a long time to, to travel from one end to the other. And you're also installing some soil moisture monitors at the moment. You're trialling some to try and maximise your centre pivot use. We are. That's right. We're um, 
We've had a moisture probe on the LoRaWAN network for uh, a month now, and we're just refining the uh, best hardware combination for the most cost-effective cost product. Yep. Um, we're using um, Centec moisture probes and a mile site um, LoRaWAN node with a, Laura, a mile site LoRaWAN gateway. Um, uh, YBMIT are conducting this research and um, they're currently uh, monitoring and um, upgrading our network. And so the plan is to use several of these moisture monitors per centre pivot and try and maximise your readily available water in the paddock at all times, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Um, to have a minimum of three. Yep. And the reason for that number is um, a lot of our pivot circles have varying soil types. Uh, so you, you'll usually have at least two. Um, there'll be a st sandy, sandy loam and a, a heavy clay. Sometimes yep. there's a there's a really sandy loam, a uh, a predominantly clay loam, and then a heavy clay loam, and and you can have similar porosity, but it's going to behave very differently, isn't it? Ex exactly. So uh, some of our irrigators have um, variable rate um, irrigation systems on them, where they can control individual sprinklers. Um, this is where the multiple moisture probes are best utilised, where um, sections of the paddocks can be uh, applied with less or more water yep. than the rest. Um, but All it, in the one irrigation. All in the one irrigation. And all run off your phone, essentially. All, all run off my phone. I've, I've, I've got a crop of potatoes where this is being implemented at the moment. Okay. Um, and that's had a uh, electromagnetic 38 map of the soil profile done yep. um, to map um, soil types and uh, uh, bedrock, clay, and uh, then um, a company called AgLogic produced a VRI map for me that contains polygons within the paddock, um, yep. all geo-located, which are then load lo loaded into the uh, VRI controller via um, FieldNet uh, through our network. So that runs the controllers that alter the amount of water that the centre pivot's putting on the ground, yes. based on what you know about the, moisture. the characteristics and the moisture with withholding of that, that yep. soil. Yep. But then you're putting probes in to better understand if it's doing that yes. and if it's getting enough water. Yep. And then you're also using your network to control when that turns on and turns off. So you don't actually have to you know, look at any data, get in the car, go down, turn the centre pivot on and guess for how long you should have it on. Exactly. It's all being done to absolute proficiency. What I love about that is that you're concentrating on your most productive ground first for implementing this system, rather than going to lower productive ground and trying to battle with that to get it up to scratch. You're finding the easy gains first, aren't you? Yep. Very clever. What else are you doing at the moment with your network? Uh, so, um, monitoring control gates, which yep. alter water flow for our irrigation systems and... Uh, because you have your own power generation plant because, on this Yes, property, because we you? have our own hydroelectric power um, generator. We need to control the inflows and outflows of our properties so that we don't take too much or release too much into the, the local irrigation scheme. The automation on two individual sites alone, controlling the dam outlet and the um, irrigation channel inlet saved me about five hours a day of having to go and check flows and alter flows, um, rather than me paying someone to do that, I um, automated them myself uh, and uh, benefit a huge saving. And so you get five hours sleep a day now? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> One of the other things that you're managing here, Will, is your, um, you've, you've got these pens here for feeding. Yeah, yeah, that's and right. And you're gonna be measuring Weight gain, daily weight gain and daily yep. feed use and yep. conversion. That's right. So, Will, how many sheep do you have on the property? Uh, we've got. this is a pretty impressive feeder you got here. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, we've got, uh, got 22,000 ewes. Yep. Um, so, and uh, of course we've got the lambs that they have. We, we generally breed about 12,000 prime lambs and uh, about uh, 9,000 merino lambs. 
And you've got this feeder set up in a series of pens here. We have. So you can have several mobs in it at one time. Is That's that right. the idea behind it? Yep. Now, what are you going to be using your remote technology for with this feed, feed setup? Uh, so we'll have a Wi-Fi link to the hill, which will to the repeater station, which will allow for uh, pan tilt zoom cameras to be able to monitor sheep yep. within each pen. So, so health and welfare concerns. Health and welfare. Sort of stuff. Yep, that's right. We'll be able to pan around and check for downed sheep. Yep. Um, uh, there'll be cameras on the feeder to be able to ensure that it's feeding properly. It's not blocked. It's um, it's uh, administering the right amount of feed. We're also going to have a way scale. When the sheep passes through this area and onto in, in, and feeds, it'll be standing on a weighing indicator, which will um, feed data into the network, as well as an RFID tag. So we'll be able to link the tag to the animal and if, as long as that this is um, um, relying on the animal going in there more than once, we'll be able yep. to uh, get an indication of its live weight gain. So you'll be able to con to calculate daily weight gain based on a series of select animals that have mul gone multiple times through that reader. That's right. And you'll also be able to get information from the feeder about the daily feed amount. Yes. So you'll be able to do your feed conversion efficiency quite easily, won't you? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. And you're concentrating a lot on maternal genetics also with your sheep. Yeah, Everyone's yeah, that's right. done paternal in the past, but yep. you're, you're going down the, the track of maternal genetics as well. Yep. And you're trying to find those small gains of efficiency with your sheep using your network system in this feed area. We are, that's right. All right, well, let's go and have a look at your next amazing innovation. Sounds good. So, well, wonders never cease. You guys actually have your own hydroelectric power station. That's right. And you're running this off some diverted water from an irrigation lease that you have on a local waterway. That's right. And you return it to that waterway. Yep. Unpolluted. Yep. Having produced all the power that you need for this farm and more. That's right. So this, uh, in the last 12 months, we've uh, converted 10, um, 10 centre pivots from diesel electric generators to underground mains. Yep. Of those 10, seven of them are being directly powered by our power station. Yep. So when there's enough water in the system to run both the power station and an irrigator, um, with no pumping of course, we're able to power them from our own electricity. So you, you generate your own mains power. We do. And to do one pivot with a centre pivot with mains power costs you, what, about $6? $6 worth of power with no pumping. Raz, yep. can, when you were doing that with diesel? Yeah, cost analysis, we worked out that we were spending $120 um, per 24 hour revolution as opposed to six dollars worth of mains power. So free power to run them, Yep. no pumping of the water at all, Yep. all you've got to do is check that they work every now and then and you're going to do that exactly with remote sensing technology aren't you? That's right. Each centre pivot has a uh, ubiquity power beam um, Wi-Fi antenna on it which is directional Wi-Fi. Uh, this connects them to the um, farm server, where a uh, uh, program called Base Station 3, um, which was provided by Valley Irrigation, um, monitors and allows me to control via the internet, via my phone, via computer, tablet, um, all of the irrigators. And how many centre pivot irrigators do you have running on that system? Uh, we have 17. It's pretty noisy in here, but let's have a look. So the water comes in through this pipe here from our um, gravity fed pipeline. It travels through this pneumatic um, spring loaded butterfly valve which is an emergency stop valve. It then is split into these two needle valves which are controlled by this actuator. The needle valves control the flow of water through two cone nozzles which concentrate the water flow into a fine spurt increasing the velocity of the water, giving it more power, concentrated power when it hits the turbine. The turbine spins a normal electric motor which is being spun backwards um, at a constant RPM of 1500 RPM. Uh, the amount of power it generates is governed on the pressure of the line 
So as the pressure of the line either increases or decreases, when the generator is either increased or decreased. She's generating 69 kilowatt hours at the moment. So Will, I can't get over this. Your family has a freaking hydroelectric power station on your farm. That's right. Now yeah. that speaks to innovation, doesn't it? And this innovation started really with your grandfather, didn't it? He went to Lincoln University. That's right. And yep. he came back with some knowledge, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He learned. Uh, he learned all about contour irrigation, um, which was quite innovative um, for the era. Well, contour in. Let me tell. You, contours are sort of sexy now, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. And he was doing it. All those years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so what exactly did he establish on this property? Uh, so he, um, he. It was a bit of a dust bowl. When, it was. When yeah, when this over, this property it? was purchased in the, I um, think it was around the 60s. Yeah. Uh, there was no irrigation here, no water. He, he for a long time had had um, the idea to build a channel. Yes. And feed this property via gravity. There's been several attempts. Um, my father helped him build it. Um, as soon as he left Ag College, uh, he was 21, yep. um, and he he built a, he, he surveyed the channel at 21, the 13 kilometre channel, and then they, they built it together. And how long did that take? That took um, nearly two years to build. Right. And uh, that provided the property Weasel Plains with up to 200 megalitres of flow a day in winter months when, there's a, when there was a, a large flood. Without having to pump it at all? With no pumping at all. And uh, they built. They also built the Weasel Dam together, which is a 5,000 meg dam. And um, it's amazing what they accomplished. Now that Weasel Dam, that's also involved with the power station, isn't it? It because is. Because you actually alter the flow in and out of that dam according to the needs of the power station. That's right. And that's another one of the projects that you're putting remote sensors on the valves to actually automate that for you as well. Exactly. So the, the power station will tell the dam whether to open or close its valves. Yep. That, that way we can maintain an accurate inflow of water and an accurate outflow of water so that we're, we're not taking too much or too less so that the local water bailiff knows how much water we're taking and how much water we're not taking. Yep. And that way we can maintain a constant supply of water in the river. And uh, yeah. So there's a story of innovation in this family. I mean, you come from good Australian convict stock and then your, your great 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 grandfather was the convict, and That's he right. ended up becoming a policeman at the end of his tenure of all strange things to do. That's right. And then the family ended up owning a pub. Yep. And then what happened? There was a want there to expand uh, in the Bowden family, and uh, and so my great great grandfather travelled to California on a ship. Uh, he spent 12 months in California digging for gold. Found and some, obviously. He was one of the lucky ones and struck gold, enough gold to enable us to buy the farm as with the proceeds of selling the pub and the gold. Yep. Uh, and we purchased the Clooney farm in 1910. Yes, and so we've been, been farming in this area for 113 years. We have. We've been farming in Bothell for 113 years. And then your grandfather went off to Ag College in another country. That's right, New Zealand. Came back with this idea of contour banks and flood irrigation, introduced yep. that to this area, increased the productivity, Yep. allowed you to buy more property. That's right. Then your father went off to Ag College. Yes. Learned how to do surveying. Yep. Came back, surveyed a 13 kilometre channel to divert water so you then had a free source of water. Yes. Introduced centre pivots. Then you went off to Ag College. That's right. And came back with a mate from college. Yep. And set up remote automation through Wi-Fi networks. That's that's right. What's your son going to do? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's exciting, it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. It is it. So this is a family that you know jumps on a boat and goes to California to get gold to buy a farm, and then just continuously innovates. What message would you give to people about risk taking? What, what's what's the family approach to risk taking? Because you are a family of risk takers. Yes. Uh, so my advice would be um, looking at the risks taken by our family. Is uh, they were educated risks. Yes. So, so you didn't bet, bet on black at the casino. We either. didn't bet on black at the casino and hope for the best. Um, we knew um, basically when. Each property was purchased. Um, there were certain commodities that they would look out for and make sure that we had a means to paying the borrowed money back. 
Yep. Uh, one of the commodities that we used was uh, native timber forests. Okay. So, so you looked at the, the natural capacity of the area. That's right. To pay for itself. Exactly. Before you even started to think about farming. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's important. That's big. Yeah. 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 Know your natural capacity. Yep. And, uh, and there was uh, another thing that my grandfather used to say is that he would study the native flora and fauna. Yep. And uh, he could tell the soil types based on the um, on the trees and vegetation there was on the land. So big, tall, healthy looking trees would generally indicate that there was a, a, a nice deep soil profile underneath them, generally. Being aware of your natural environment is another big thing too if you're going to take a risk. That's right, yeah. Well, last but not least, Will, you're now leading the pack in terms of farm automation and networks, on-farm networks. What advice would you give to people that are on the fence and thinking about implementing it? Because now's really the time, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Um, it's an exciting new space. Uh, it's a difficult one for people to navigate because generally um, a lot of people don't have a really good understanding of how it all works and it makes it incredibly hard to choose which um, option to go with. I would recommend trying your hardest to go with an open source company that's um, interested in and um, in, in encourages um, compatibility across providers because you don't. the last thing you want to be is stuck with a provider that's not interested in you being able to share your data such as soil moisture data with your you know say ir irrigator controllers if the two aren't compatible um, it just sort of it leaves you uh, without the ability to improve going forwards down the track um, but of course um, ease of installation and ease of use and ongoing costs are also a, um, a, uh, a key you don't um, want to invest in something that's going to make you broke anymore, exactly right? you don't want to invest in something that's going to make you broke and and not work You're going to steal years. your data. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's a big thing, isn't it? You keep all your data. Yeah, we you don't do. Give your data to anyone. No, that's right. And 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 what it's meant is, um, uh, we started aut automating back in 2000 and well, very first started in 2014, and um, and now uh, the that's when you and a mate built a node out of an old dunny. That's right, we, we, we built a pipe. repeater station out of an old dunny and uh, and now we're able to utilise that old dunny for uh, a Laurawan gateway as well which plugs straight into our network um, which we own and we own the data from it and we can now have, uh, have moisture data anywhere on the farm um, to control any of our pivots, um, our irrigators, um, when to water, when not to water and uh, we're autonomising which is fantastic. Well, mate, I can't wait. I'm hoping that you'll have us back. I'm hoping that this video is ple a pleasant experience for you and we can come back. And I'd love it if we had some questions or some comments from viewers that maybe in a couple of years' time we can come back and address with you as you continue on this amazing journey of automation. Of course, Tim. It's been a pleasure one. to have you. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Really appreciate it. And you're a classic Aussie family of innovators and can do. Guys if you like this kind of content don't forget hit the little subscribe button down there give it a thumbs up there's plenty more content like this on timthompson.ag and I have a Patreon we'll see you next week.